Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can prove that zero factorial equals to one. And one of the easiest ways you can prove this is to use the concept of permutation. And you remember that the permutation of n objects taking r at a time is defined as n factorial over n minus r factorial, where your r is strictly greater than zero but less or equals to n. Now, if we take the special case whereby your r is equal to n, what are we going to have? We are going to have, if your r is equal to n, we are going to have this to be what n permutation, n to be equal to n factorial over n minus n factorial. And if we cross multiply, we are going to have this to be n minus n factorial to be equal to n factorial all divided by n permutation n which we have this to be zero factorial to be equals to n factorial over and what is the pump n the permutation of n object taking n at a time now let's think of it suppose we have three books book one book two and book three and we want to arrange these three books taking three at a time now the first book can be arranged in how many ways is that we put it here or we put it here or we put it here that means that can be done in what in three ways times now once the first book has been filled in any of these places here we would have two spaces left and we will also have two books left here and if we arrange the second book in any of the two ways that can be done in how many ways that can be done in two ways and once that has been done let's say we fill the book one here we fill the books two here and the third the last book which is your book three can be filled in how many ways can be filled in just one way that's what one way which gives us what three factorial so in the same sense the permutation of n objects taking all at a time is what is your n factorial that means that what we have at, as our denominator here is what n factorial and what is n factorial divided by n factorial this will give us what one that means zero factorial is equal to what one another way we can do this is to use the concept of the gamma function and what is the da gamma function the gamma function is defined as the gamma function of n is defined as the integral of zero to what infinity of e raised to the power of minus t times t raised to the power of n minus one dt where your n is strictly greater than what zero we can also define it like this the gamma function of n plus one can be defined as the limit between zero and infinity of e raised to the power minus t times t raised to the power of n dt where your n is strictly greater than minus one and the gamma function of n plus one is still the same thing as what n factorial so meaning that if we replace n to be equal to zero what are we going to have we are going to have that from here we are going to have the gamma function of what the gamma function of zero plus one to be equal to the integral of zero towards infinity of e raised to the power of negative t times t raised to the power zero dt sorry this is dt dt right where your n is strictly greater than what minus one of course our n is strictly greater than minus one and if we evaluate this integral what are we going to have we are going to have this to be the gamma function of one which is still the same thing as what zero factorial to be equal to the integral of zero to infinity of e raised to the power minus c dt in which we can write this as the limit at which p tends to infinity of the integral of zero to p of e raised to the power minus c dt and this is now our definite integral so in which we can evaluate this as the limit at which p tends to infinity of what if we integrate e raised to the power minus t we are going to have this to be minus e raised to the power minus t then we have our limit between zero and what and p and if we evaluate this limit what are we going to have we are going to have the limit at which p tends towards infinity of if we put 
p here this is definite integral we are going to substitute the upper limit which is what minus e raised to the power of minus p then plus what because minus because when you put zero here we are going to have this to be what e raised to the power zero is what one and if we evaluate evaluate this integral limit what are we going to have we are going to have this to be now if you put negative infinity here and if you check from the graph of negative exponential we have the graph of negative exponential to look like something like this all right so we have this to be one here so meaning that as at infinity all right the graph is already what make is already turning to zero that is when you put infinity here we are going to have this limit to be what to be what zero because if you check from the graph as your x tends to as your x tends to infinity the graph is already the value of your y is already what zero is already on the is already parallel to the x axis so that means this is what this is zero from this side then plus what one so we have this to be what one don't forget where we are coming from that we want to prove that what zero factorial here which is our integral we just proved that zero factorial is equal to what one so is that you use the concept of permutation or you can use the concept of gamma function so i hope you enjoyed this video please make sure you click the subscribe button and also on the notification icon so that you'll be notified whenever we post a video like this so i hope you have learned a lot from this tutorial thank you very much for listening and god bless you